we invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. A year ago, when Luigi Basco left Italy to start his new life in America, he promised his mother that he would write and tell her about his adventures. So now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia, America is a great country where everybody's a very nice and a friendly. And right now, Mamma Mia, in America is what they call income tax season. <laughs> this is the time when everybody is fi busy figuring out how much money they got to send to the government and how much they're going to live on and what they got to left. <laughs> Me, I'm going to try to be extra good American. I'm going to wait till March 15th. Last of January 1st, I make out my income tax and I send it right in. I'm a got empty pockets of three months before everybody else. <laughs> but I'm a got the good reason for sending my money in so fast to Mamma Mia. I'm a no wanna be guilty of what they call withholding a tax. <laughs> Mamma, by the time you receive this letter, is it gonna be time for your birthday? Happy birthday, Mamma Mia. I'm only wish I can send you silver candlesticks. I promise you I send it when I come to America. But is it going to have to wait for a little while? Anyway, in a close, you're going to find the birthday card, which I'm buying a store especially for you. They don't have the kind of card I want. But do you know, with us, the feeling is a count more than anything else. So don't look where it's to say, Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Anyway, I'm still going to try to get something nice for you. Right now, I'm leaving my antique shop for my night school class. Hello, Mr. Basco. Got a registered letter for you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mailman. Oh, uh, Mr. Basco, you got any new stamps from Italy for my kid? No, but when I get some more, I save it for you. Hey, this letter must be advertisement for new mamas. It's a, say, Maternal Revenue Department. <laughs> You better take a good look at it. It's from the Internal Revenue Department. Well, so long. Internal Revenue. Dear Mr. Basco, an Internal Revenue agent will call to see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. in reference to your 1948 tax return. Mamma mia. What the can they want from me? I go right to now and ask my night school to teach him a spalding. All right, all right, class, class, please, please, let's come to attention. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Uh, present. Mr. Horowitz? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? Mr. Schultz, you're here. Aren't you going to say anything? What is there to say? I'm here, and that's all. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. Now, class, our lesson for today is on government. Now, who can tell me the three main branches of our government? I can see, Joe. Good. What are they? Main branch, uptown and downtown. <laughs> no, Mr. Schultz, no, that's completely wrong. That's not even anywhere All near... All right, don't rub it in. <laughs> Will someone else volunteer to answer that question? The three main branches of the government... Now, if you recall, I gave you a simple formula for remembering it. Think of Washington and three branches on one tree. I'm exploring. I try. Fine. Well, uh, is it the, the legislative, the, uh, the executive, uh, the executive, uh, executive... Luigi, get off that branch before you break the tree! <laughs> please, please, Mr. Schultz. Legislative and executive is correct, Mr. Basco. Now, I'll give you a hint. The third department has to do with courts. Oh, yes, I'm a remember. 
a legislative, an executive, and a judicial. Perfect, Mr. Basco. For that, you get a good mark. Never mind the good mark. Give Luigi a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. Oh, yes, Mr. Olson? Uh, yeah, uh, the legislative department is to make the laws. The executive department is to carry out the laws. The judicial department is to try the laws in court. That's very good, Mr. Olson. Yo, oh, I stay up real late last night, Miss Spaulding, and I study real hard. And that's why I always answer the questions right. What a show-off. I hate a man that knows everything. <laughs> Miss, Miss Spaulding. Yes, Mr. Basco? I'm going like to ask you something. A little while ago, I'm a receiver this letter from Internal Revenue Department. Ooh, Internal Revenue Department, Luigi. <laughs> Ooh, that's bad. Why didn't you pay your income tax? For a short time, I pay my tax in January. That's a two months ahead of the time. Ooh, that's even worse, Luigi. They suspect you if you're too anxious. <laughs> The California Limited leaves at 4 o'clock. Jump on it. Get away. Go out of town. Mr. Schultz, please. Please, Mr. Schultz. <laughs> <laughs> really, Mr. Schultz, really. They do not suspect you, Mr. Basco. The government is very grateful to anyone who sends his tax money in before the big rush. Then why the government is sending a special man to see me tomorrow? Uh, Luigi, uh, maybe they, they want to thank you for being an early bird. Then why don't they send me a letter of thanks? So why are they sending a man? I'll tell you why, Luigi. Because they can't fit handcuffs into an envelope. <laughs> My rheumatism, Luigi. Oh, listen to me. I couldn't get $30 for myself on a used car lot. <laughs> Schultz, in a come taxi man is a come tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Do you think he's going to make a trouble? Oh, smile, Luigi, smile. <laughs> Maybe you just made it a little mistake and nothing is going to happen. You know what happened when I first came to America? I sent in my first income tax without anything written on it. <laughs> Why? Because on the top it said, return this income tax blank. <laughs> Smile, Luigi. I'm trying to make you laugh. Schultz, is it going to be some birthday present for my mama if she finds out I'm in trouble with the government? <sighs> Don't worry, Luigi. Smile. What can they do to you? Can they take away your money? Can they take away your clothes? Can they take away your business? Sure, sir, can they? Tomorrow night, you know, if you ain't got it, they took it away. <laughs> My friend, hello, Luigi, hello, hello. <laughs> hello, Pasquale. What's the matter, Luigi? You walking around like a chicken with its tail between its legs. <laughs> Pasquale is a long story. You see, I'm going to get a letter from Income Tax Department that says a man is coming to antique shop tomorrow. So I'm taking tonight to school for help. Miss Spaulding says there's nothing to worry about. But Olsen is saying it's maybe trouble, and the Schultz is making it sound even worse. Oh, she'll go to everybody, but your friend is bringing you from the other country, Pasquale. Luigi, why are you always running around every place for information when you could have come right to here to get the dope? <laughs> You're so right, Pasquale. <laughs> Is there nobody a bigger doper than you? <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm saying it's to come out a different. <laughs> Luigi, you always are gonna have a trouble with a taxi department because you ain't got a what they call a dependent. Dependent? What's that? A dependent? That's just something a fella is a married, so he should pay less taxes. 
Oh. Now, I'm going to show you I'm your best friend, Luigi. I'm going to give you one of my dependents a free of charge. <laughs> you will, Pasquale? Sure, I'm going to give you a wife. For Pasquale, you already married to her. Not my wife. My daughter Rosa. What do you say, Luigi? No, Pasquale. Rosa is a too fat for me. <laughs> so what if my little girl is away 250 pounds? If you marry an ordinary girl, you've got a one dependent. If you marry my Rosa right away, you've got a two dependent. <laughs> Pasquale, please, don't talk about Rosa. Just to tell me, why is income tax man coming to see me? Why is he coming to see anybody? To get him more money. Tell me, my big business man, how much money you send it to the government in the January? Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Well, there's your trouble. You violate a very big law, the uh, e pluribus unum law. <laughs> yes, that's what they call it. E pluribus unum? Sure. For men is the e pluribus unum, for ladies is the she pluribus unum. <laughs> for a Pasquale, if this is American law, why is it written in a foreign language? Because it's especially for foreigners. They got to pay an extra hundred dollars. Hundred dollars? Mamma mia, Pasquale, when was it this law passed? Uh, just a half hour ago. <laughs> Didn't you hear it on your radio? No. No wonder you ain't got FM. FM? Sure, FM. That's the mean that they broadcast about a hour of the money. <laughs> Your radio, your radio is the AM. That's mean they broadcast story about American money. But Pasquale, what am I going to do? I'm not got a hundred dollars to pay this unum tax. Well, I'm not such a bad fella. You know, Pasquale's got a big heart, always taking care of people he's alike. Luigi, I'm ready to give you a hundred dollars to keep you out of Alcatraz. All you got to do is marry Rosa. What do you say, my son? Pasquale, where's the Alcatraz? All right, go ahead. Be stubborn. You ain't got no credit in the bank. Where are you going to get the $100? Pasquale, I go to a loan company. I see advertisement in all the papers that say, we lend you money. All you need is co-signer. Well, I'm going to get a Schultz, and he's going to sign it for my co. <laughs> go ahead. Get a Schultz. See what I... Uh... Eh, loan company, eh? Uh-huh. Luigi, is no hard feeling between us. What do you want a Schultz for? I'm your best friend. I sign it for you, Cole. Pasquale, you do this for me? Sure, I know a fine loan company. The Happy Finance Company on a Dearborn Street. 800 a block. Oh. Now, you go down the first thing in the morning... I'm going to take care of everything for you right now. Go ahead, my little man. Take a walk. Stop worrying. Oh, thank you, go, Pasquale. Go. You're a real friend. Sure. Eh? Goodbye. Go, go. Goodbye. <laughs> ah, bro, figaro. Bravo, bravissimo. Ah, bro, figaro. Bravo, bravissimo. Fortunatissimo, fortunatissimo. Fort... Hello? Happy Finance Company? Fellow by name of Luigi Basco is coming in tomorrow for a loan. I'm his co-signer. So give him all of the money he's asking for. A hundred, a thousand, even a million dollars. I'm a good for it. Oh, pardon me, I gotta hang up for now. My keepers are coming for me. What's my name? Pasquale. But around here, everybody's calling me Snake Pit. <laughs> Life with Luigi continues in just a moment. But first, every once in a while, you hear an announcer making the fact that 99 million people listen to CBS every week. So let's add another fact on there to the effect that most of them are crazy about a certain blonde. Along with Jack Benny, Lux Theater, and Arthur Godfrey, this blonde's always one of the most popular in radio, and she does it by thoroughly confusing everyone. All the way from the income tax experts and insurance salesmen to her boyfriend and best girlfriend. If you haven't met my friend Irma... The blonde in question, wangle an introduction over most of these same stations tomorrow night. There's never a dull moment, never a lull in the laughter when my friend Irma tries to let an idea enter her pretty blonde head.
And now for the second act of Luigi Basco's adventures in Chicago, we turn to page two of his letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, although in a come a tax man is a come this afternoon to see me, I'm not so worried because I'm going to loan a company to borrow a hundred dollars. Everything is a depend on this loan. So I'm fixing myself up to look like a real rich man. I'm going to wear for the first time what you gave me when I left the home. The blue earmuffs and the red tablecloth. <laughs> tablecloth is going to make a fine muffler. Also, I'm going to get a haircut. Cost me 20 cents. And I bite my fingernails all nice and even. <laughs> also, Barbara is selling me special perfume. It's like expensive. Cost me 10 cents, a half a milk bottle. <laughs> but the mamma mia, believe me when I say, with my haircut, a shave, my nails and my smell, nobody we ever bury look so good. <laughs> Excuse me, please. This is the Happy Finance Company, no? That's right. Well, I'm coming to make a loan from you. My name is Luigi Basco. I... Basco? Say, were you recommended by your friend, Mr. Pasquale? That's right. I'm going to get out of sight. I think I was a pushed. Please, mister. Maybe you heard the wrong. I was talking about a fellow who is a guarantee this loan for you. What did you say his name was? Pasquale. This is the time I'm sure he's a pusher me. <laughs> I'm a think of Pasquale is no help me. He's a throw a monkey into my wrench. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mommy. That was my last chance to get a hundred dollars for a heap of the unum attack. So what am I gonna do now? I know. I'm gonna go right down to the income tax department. I'm going to wait for them to come and get to me. I'm going to give them myself up. <laughs> Mamma mia, what a big building. On the top, as you say, treasury depth. Such a big building just for that. Must be everybody is in a depth to the treasury. <laughs> well, Luigi, you always was a good citizen. Take your courage in your hand. Go inside. Explain everything to them. I'm supposed to pay $100. I'm going to pay only $10. Is a $90 a short. Mamma mia, look at how all those girls are working and the people all are rushing around. They must have been turning the whole place upside down and looking for my $90. <laughs> Pardon me, mister, please, sir. Yes? I'm Luigi Basco. I give up. What? There's no use to look for the money you want to find it. Well, why not? I'm going to never send it. What are you talking about? Please, Mr. Taxman. Take a look at this fine overcoat. It's got a real beaver collar with a pile of buttons. <laughs> Tell me, how much you think is worth? Mm, well, uh, I'd say about $90. $90? Take it, we're even up. What? Goodbye, and God bless you. Hey, 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 wait, come back here, mister. I don't want this cold. I, I huh? think you're all mixed up. Uh, just who are you looking for? In a come tax man. Is it no you? <laughs> no. Hey, just go to room 202, right over there. Oh, thank you. Yes? Can I help you? Hey, look, Mr. Taxman. I'm going to have a lot of trouble with my taxes. <laughs> well, everybody does. I'll try to help you. Did you make out a long form or short form? I'm a no remember. was about a ten inches long and a six inches away. <laughs> oh, no. When you filled out your form, do you remember? Was it a 1040? I'm not too sure, but I think it was a closer to 12 o'clock. <laughs> huh? Well, never mind that. Did you use a tax table? Tax a table? No, I'm going to use a plain kitchen table. <laughs> Look, mister, let's use this form as an example. Did you fill out something like this? Yes, sir, that's right. Okay. Now, are you a worker or are you in business? Well, I'm a worker, but it's not so much a business. <laughs> well, that's not... Let's take item two. All right. Income. Just how much did you say you took in? Eight hundred dollars. What? You're in business and you made eight hundred dollars all year? 
Did you tell the truth? To tell the truth, I'm a didn't tell the truth. Well, if $800 isn't what you took in, how much did you take in? I'm only taking in $400, but I'm ashamed to put down so little. <laughs> well, that sounds very good. But I warn you, the department checks on everything. I don't know why people have trouble figuring out their tax. It's all down in black and white. Uh-huh. Here, I'll read it. All right. If your income was less than $5,000, you may find your tax in the tax table and paid for. This table, which is provided by law, automatically allows you about 10% of your total income for contributions, interest, taxes, casualty losses, medical expenses, and miscellaneous. But if your expenditures and losses of these classes amount to more than 10%, it will be advantageous to itemize them and complete your tax on page 3. Do you understand that? <laughs> Please, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask you one question. What? Do you understand that? <laughs> Let's read it again. All right. Sir. If your income was like... Wait a minute. Exactly what did you come here for? Well, I'm going to receive this letter. No, I say. Hey, mister. You better go right home. An internal revenue agent is coming to talk to you in about a half hour. I know that. That's why I'm a come to see you about. Please, I'm always a try to be a good citizen. What the government will do to a man who's, who's not pay his taxes? <laughs> Mamma mia. Mamma mia, what the kind of punishment is this? <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. What's the matter? You didn't get your loan? I'm not can understand why. He's worse than that, Pasquale. I'm going to go to income tax department, and a manager mixes me up with a short form, a longer form, a 1040 o'clock, and I'm going to tell him a kitchen table. He's going to say, put on a tax table. We got an argument. I don't know what do you think he say. What? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter for you? You swallow a nanny goat? <laughs> Pasquale, I'm in the most terrible trouble of my life. I think I'm a disgrace to everybody. American government, because I'm not going to pay my tax. And my mamma mia, because I'm not going to send her a birthday present. Pasquale, everything is useless. And I'm not even got the one friend. Luigi, don't talk so fast. You've got me, and I'm the most useless friend you got. <laughs> Stop worrying. I'm going to pay you tax. I'm sending you mom a nice birthday present. Pasquale, you going to do all of this for me? Sure. Pack up your troubles in your old bag and a smile. <laughs> for anybody who's my son-in-law, I'm all the money bags of Pasquale. The money's going to flow like a wine. And the watcher for somebody who's not your son-in-law? Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> Well, what's going to be your pleasure? Disgrace or Mary Rosa? Remember, revenue man is going to be here right a minute. All right, the Pasquale. Ah, you make me so happy, Luigi. You're a real fine Italian boy. You ask the father's permission before you run away with a girl. <laughs> now I call it a happy bride. Rosa! 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 You call me Papa! <laughs> Come here, my little pigeon. Say hello to Luigi. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, Rosa. <laughs> well, Luigi, you ready to fly away with a Rosa? Pasquale, how am I going to get her off of the ground? <laughs> You talk too much. <laughs> well, now we make a plan for the honeymoon. I'm Mr. Wallace from the Treasury Department. I'm looking for Mr. Basco. Is he here? That's me. He's all right, Mr. Treasury Department. I'm going to take care of everything. Luigi, you and Rosa, go in the kitchen and uh, bake a cake. I'm going to pay for everything. Hey, uh, just a minute, Mr. Basco. I'd like to talk to you. 
You know, ordinarily, when there's a tax discrepancy, we send out a letter. But inasmuch as this was your first return, we have been authorized to contact you personally. I know. I'm going to pay my hip pluribus on my tax. Luigi, go back. What? Mr. Basco, there's no such thing as an e, e pluribus unum tax. What? what the uh, revenue man is a right, Luigi. A half hour ago, this tax was a repeal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pasquale, where do you find this out? On an AM or an FM? Television. <laughs> now go, Luigi. You and the Rosa, go back to Kansas. Just go, a minute, go. please. I'd like to finish my business here. Mr. Basco, you don't owe the government any money. We owe you money. Here's a check for ten dollars you overpaid. I'm gonna get the money back. <laughs> Imagine a Luigi's overpays the tax. That's a stupid thing. But he's a good hearted little fool. And you know something? If I, Pasquale, was to get a money back from the government, I'ma like this a little fella so much I'd be giving him every penny. Oh, are you Pasquale of Pasquale Spaghetti Palace? See? Well, I just about I'm just about to contact you. Say, who makes out your income tax? You overpaid your income tax, too. I've got a check for you for $40. What? Pasquale. Uh, look, I'm... I'm, I'm Mr. I Pasquale, I'm taking you at your word. Here you are, Mr. Basco. Mr. Pasquale's check. Thank you. Hey, Luigi, where you going? Come back, my son. Goodbye, Plurabasion. <laughs> And so, Mamma Mia, everything has come out the final with income tax department. I'm still got the papa's overcoat. And the best of all, for you, birthday, I'm sending you a separate package with a pair of a silver candlesticks. Do you like them, Mamma Mia, huh? You see, I'm keeping my promise. Mamma Mia, if you see a couple of tears on this page, don't think it's me crying. It was a Pasquale when he's a pay for the candlesticks. <laughs> well, Mamma Mia, happy birthday. You can't hear me singing while I'm writing this, but I'm a singer just the same. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mama. Excuse me while I turn the page. Yeah. Mia. Happy birthday to you. Your loving son, Luigi, the little immigrant. Be sure to listen next week at the same time over most of these stations when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco describing his adventures in America. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and stars J. Carol Nash as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Music is under the direction of Lynn Murray. One of your favorite quiz games, Winner Take All, brings you fast and furious fun every weekday on most of these same CBS stations. Winner Take All lives up to its name by letting a contestant stay on so long as he's smarter and faster than each new opponent who faces him. Enjoy a lively session with Winner Take All tomorrow and pit your wits against the current champion. But now stay tuned for a different kind of quiz. Throw your IQs in the wastebasket and listen to It Pays to Be Ignorant, which follows immediately over most of the CBS stations. Bob Stevenson speaking with the CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.